So we've gone through each of the differentiation rules piece by piece. Chain rule, product rule, quotient rule. I've shown you where they come from. Well, essentially kind of how they work rather. Then I've shown you some examples for each. But really when it comes down to it, would you be able to tell which of the rules you would need to use in each situation? So if you weren't told to use the product rule, would you be able to tell just by looking at the question that it was a product rule question? So that's really the point of this video. And here are four examples. Okay? So maybe you want to pause the video here and think, which of the three rules would you use to differentiate each of these four? Okay? So have a go at that and then press play again when you're ready to see kind of how we do it. So I'm going to start with this number one, y is equal to 3x minus 2 to the power of 4. Now because we have a function of x, 3x minus 2, within another function of x, x to the power of 4, so you can kind of see that there is a function within a function, that must mean that we must use the chain rule. So the chain rule to differentiate this, so dy by dx, the 4 comes down to the front, the derivative of what's inside comes outside, so that's 3, and then take 1 of the power. So we would have 12 lots of 3x minus 2 cubed. Let's have a look at the second one. Now, the second one is probably quite obvious. Because you have one function divided by another function, this is a quotient of functions. And so we must use the quotient rule. So we start at the bottom, 2 minus 3x, and multiply that by the derivative of the top, which is 4. Take away the top, so 4x plus 1, times by the derivative of the bottom, which is minus 3, and divide that by the bottom squared. Okay? So now we want to tidy up the numerator. So we have minus 3x times 4, so minus 12x. And we've got a minus 4x times minus 3, so that's a plus 12x. So minus 12x plus 12x will get me 0. And I've got a 2 times 4, so 8. Take away 1 times minus 3, so plus 3 there, 8 there, so that must be 11 over 2 minus 3x squared. Now let's look at number 3. Number 3, the square root of 6x plus 5. So we have a function of x, 6x plus 5, within another function, this square root. So we must use the chain rule again. But I'm going to rewrite this as 6x plus 5 to the half to make it easier for myself. Putting it into index form makes it easier to perform the, perform the differentiation. So the half comes down to the front. The derivative of what's inside comes outside, so that's 6. And then I'm going to take 1 off the power, so minus a half. So let's simplify this. 1 half times 6 is 3. So I have 3 lots of 6x plus 5 to the minus a half. So finally, number 4. Well, by process of elimination, since we've had a chain rule problem and a quotient rule problem, it's likely that I'm going to set a product rule question. Now, you should have spotted that this was a product rule because it is the multiplication of one function and another. Okay? I know that this is two functions within, uh, so it's a composite function of 6x plus 5 and square root of x. So that means that in order to differentiate that part, I'm going to have to use the chain rule. And thankfully, I've already got the derivative of it. So in order to differentiate that, use the product rule. The first 
times by the derivative of the second, which was 3, 6x plus 5 to the minus a half, plus the second times the derivative of the first. Okay? So that is 6x plus 5 to the half. And so we have 3x times 6x plus 5 to the minus a half, plus 6x plus 5 to the half. Okay? And that is the product rule used. So you could combine this and factorise it. Okay? Um, I'm not going to do that at this stage, but if you want to, have a practice and try that out as well.